We are on SportsIllustrated.com, and the article is, The Raiders Would Be a Fitting Winner of the Sioux Sweepstakes. The writer tries to make the argument that this is a throwback to 1998. Well, he goes back to 97. In that year, the Raiders were selecting number two in the draft. They wound up taking Darrell Russell. Darrell Russell was not their pick. The Raiders' pick at the time was going to be Orlando Pace. They thought they were set up. They were going to get Orlando Pace. I believe the Jets were selecting in front of them. Just refresh. Came from the Jets. And the Rams traded to get Orlando Pace. And the Rams went on to win Super Bowls, and the Raiders went on to do nothing, basically. Daryl Russell was a player who did not live up to expectations, took a lot of plays off like a lot of Raider players back then, because they knew there was two bosses going involved. You had your head coach, but you had someone above him who was the head head coach, Al Davis. So they would take advantage of of our coaches. He didn't live up to expectations. I click on his name. And he burned out. Because he has a few good seasons, as everyone remembers, during much up to the Super Bowl. Then he just falls off the radar. I remember he held out, too, for extra money. But I don't think you want to compare Sue to Tower Russell. I think you want something better. I think you want to compare them still to Warren Sapp. Two different personalities. But you want that guy, big guy in the middle, to anchor the line. And that's what Warren Sapp was for John Gruden, Tampa Bay. And I think Sue can be Warren Sapp for him. In Oakland. And the whole. The whole point of this. Is to unleash Mac. Mac is. He's always triple teamed. If not double teamed. And he. Is always held too. If they have to account for Sue. They're not going to be able to hold as much. Or block him as much. I would hope Gunther is going to be very creative with the way he aligns things. I hope there's going to be a lot of stunts and movements. Not just, don't just line up like it was 1976 or something and just, you know, I mean, it's got to be a little more complex. Because offenses are more complex, and they basically neutralized Mac last year. The Patriot game, a lot of people don't pick up on these things. Because they can't write certain things. You're not going to hear Paul Gutierrez pointing out that the Patriots didn't like that Mac took a low shot on Brady. So they took a shot on him, and he was limping. They don't point out these things, because I don't know where they are. They watch it. I don't even know how they get paid. The guy at ESPN that uh, was uh, was before Paul Gutierrez was Bill Williamson, I believe. And just watch him try to interview someone. Um, the press conferences, or well, I mean, they, whatever, you know, when they have the, the 
pull the reporters around a player or something. But anyway, they don't report these type of things. Matt got, um, he got neutralized versus the Patriots. And you can't, you can't keep on hopping on this. He's a generational pay, player. He's the, he's this and that. No, he's part of a team and he actually needs help. He's good, but he's not Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor could take over the entire game himself. Didn't matter how many people you had blocking him. He needs help to take off some of those blockers. And Sue is the help he needs. John Gruden's the coach to get both of them, both of them motivated. Excited about 2018. It's a little early. It's 10:34 on the East Coast. It's cold. Got snow tonight. But sometime today we should learn something. Eric Decca just left the Raiders without any contract. They continue to bring in wide receivers. But if Sue leaves the building, I have to feel they they were lowballing him. Or they weren't able to convince him. But I like the chances. John Gruden. And yes, I hope he uses that picture of Sue wearing the Raider jersey as a kid next to Charles Barkley. I would blow that thing up. Frame it. Put it on the wall behind me in my desk. In my office. Where I invite him in. The office where Gruden works. Most definitely. Gruden. I think is pretty sentimental in some ways. That's why he's back. He spoke about Al Davis. But he still expects to um, smell his cologne because he used to drench himself in it. He was one of those type of guys. I forget the name of the cologne, but it was made by Chanel. Maybe you should wear it for good luck. <laughs> you should take him in there. What did, what did Al Davis, um, former executive, Lombardi, I think it was, he told his entire diet and just his whole daily routine. He should offer Sue some, what was it, German, uh, some sort of cake. <laughs> Apparently Al Davis needed three or four times a day. <laughs> I definitely have that picture behind me. And I would be reminding Sue what he's accomplished so far. With the Detroit Lions. With the uh, Miami Dolphins. And the Raiders are nothing to write home about because you got to go back to 2002. They were in a Super Bowl. And they look very bad in the playoffs without without Carr. But he's got to sell him, too. It's not just about the money. Someone says it's not about the money. That's great. But how do you convince him this is the best place? 
not the Rams. As I said in my other video, I think you need to structure it based on Las Vegas. I'm assuming this is not going to be uh, just a one-year contract. But I'd like to see him in a Raider uniform. In the AFC West. Let's see, who do we have who do we have for quarterbacks? The Kansas City Chiefs will have a basically a rookie quarterback, Mahomes. Denver? You never know who they have for quarterback. The Casey Keenum? Is it Casey K? Casey, um, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Who do, uh, let's see, uh, and then Rivers, getting up there in age. I see the Chargers is the main obstacle to the Raiders now. The Raiders want a not a Daryl Russell.